Welcome back to our channel. Today, we've got an intriguing question that has puzzled many history buffs. Why didn't the Nazis invade Sweden during World War II? It's not just about military strategy, but it takes us on a deep dive into the complex world of diplomacy, economy, and survival during one of the darkest times of the 20th century. While Sweden maintained an official stance of neutrality, it undeniably participated in several acts that were far from neutral during the war. So sit tight as we journey back to the tumultuous era of World War II and uncover the mystery behind Sweden's neutrality amidst all the chaos. In the years leading up to World War II, Sweden maintained a policy of neutrality and non-alignment. This stance was deeply rooted in the country's historical experiences and geopolitical considerations. Sweden had not been involved in any military conflicts since 1814 and was determined to stay out of the escalating tensions that eventually led to World War II. While any country has the freedom to declare its neutrality, the complexities of maintaining such a position during war are more intricate. It's often misunderstood that neutrality means completely cutting off diplomatic or commercial interactions with warring nations. But that's not entirely true. A neutral country doesn't have to refrain from trading or engaging in diplomacy with belligerent nations unless they directly supply them with war materials. Throughout the war, Sweden continued its trade relations with Germany and Japan, while still adhering to the neutrality rule. In fact, the number of Swedish diplomats in Japan even increased during the war, showing the country's active diplomatic involvement. However, neutrality during war often falls into grey areas, as the legality doesn't always provide clear-cut solutions. To truly understand Sweden's position amidst the conflicting sides, we need to delve into the unfolding events, the challenges faced by the country, and the government's responses to the escalating crisis. Geopolitically, Sweden shared borders with both Norway and Finland, both of which became involved in the war. Norway was occupied by Nazi Germany in 1940, and Finland was engaged in the Winter War against the Soviet Union during the same period. Sweden, situated between these two nations, was in a delicate position. The Swedish government, led by Prime Minister Per Albin Hansson, recognized the importance of maintaining a neutral stance to avoid being drawn into the conflict. Sweden's decision to remain neutral during World War II was not solely based on moral or ethical considerations. The country's leadership also understood the strategic importance of trade and economic stability. Sweden was a supplier of crucial resources, such as iron ore, to both Nazi Germany and the Allies. The Swedes managed to navigate this delicate situation by adopting a policy of pragmatic neutrality, allowing trade to continue while avoiding direct military engagement. As the war progressed, Germany invaded and occupied several neighboring countries, including Denmark and Norway. Despite Sweden's proximity and strategic importance, the Nazis did not invade Sweden during World War II. Several factors contributed to this decision. A critical factor was the economic pragmatism displayed by both parties. As mentioned earlier, Sweden possessed valuable resources, including iron ore, that were vital for the German war machine. However, rather than resorting to invasion, Hitler's Germany opted for a more diplomatic and economic approach to secure access to these resources. The Swedish iron ore deposits, particularly those in the northern region of Karuna, were of immense strategic importance. Germany, heavily reliant on these resources for its military industry, recognized the value of maintaining a steady supply. Through negotiations and trade agreements, the Nazis secured access to Swedish iron ore without resorting to military aggression. Even before the war broke out in 1939, Germany had already managed to get 40% of its iron ore from Sweden. At the time, British intelligence had estimated that German industry relied heavily on Swedish iron ore, and a decrease or halt in Swedish exports could have a disastrous effect on Germany's military efforts. So Ralph Glynn, a British Member of Parliament, claimed that a secession of Swedish iron ore exports would bring the war to an end within months. When Germany invaded Norway in April 1940, Sweden refused to give in to Germany's demand for iron ore as it would have been a betrayal to their Scandinavian counterparts who were fiercely resisting the German attack. 
But that stance couldn't last forever. Once the Allied forces withdrew from Norway, Sweden found itself in a tight spot and had no choice but to give in to Germany's demands. From that point on, Sweden even allowed German troops to use its railway network and agreed to a yearly iron supply deal with Germany. As Germany's invasion of Norway advanced, one of its stipulations to Sweden was the avoidance of mobilization. Sweden, in response, started constructing fortifications along its Norwegian border and Scanian coast. During the invasion of Norway, Germany required access to Swedish telephone and telegraph lines for communications, which Sweden granted but also covertly monitored. In Espen Eidem's book, The Blood Track, it's recounted how, under Adolf Hitler's orders, Nazi Germany sent three trains with 30 to 40 sealed carriages through Sweden to Narvik's battlefield. These trains were said to transport medical staff and provisions for wounded German soldiers in Narvik, but in truth, there were 17 soldiers for every medical officer or orderly. Sweden was aware of the troop transportation, as a Swedish representative in Berlin reported witnessing them boarding. Furthermore, these trains carried heavy artillery, anti-aircraft guns, ammunition, and communication and supply equipment. Sweden's challenges were not solely military, they encompassed commercial aspects as well. While Germany relied on Sweden for iron supply, Sweden depended on Germany for 21% of its import needs. The Swedish government, also aware of its economic leverage, skillfully utilized this position to extract favorable terms from Germany. By maintaining a semblance of neutrality, Sweden could engage in trade with both the Allies and the Axis powers, ensuring its economic well-being during a tumultuous period. This economic interdependence created a mutual interest in preserving the status quo, making an invasion by the Nazis less appealing. Sweden's geographical position and its challenging terrain played a significant role in deterring Nazi Germany from launching a full-scale invasion. Nestled between Norway and Finland, Sweden is a land of mountainous regions, dense forests and numerous waters, creating a natural fortress that could prove challenging to any invading force. The Kjolan Mountains form a natural border between Norway and Sweden, presenting a formidable barrier to an invading army. Furthermore, the Swedish archipelago, with its maze of islands and narrow passageways, presented a naval hindrance for a potential sea-based offensive. A military undertaking of that magnitude, through such inhospitable terrain, would necessitate vast resources, manpower and time all of which could be better utilized on other fronts. The vast expanse of the Eastern Front, where Germany was engaged in intense conflict with the Soviet Union, demanded significant military resources. Additionally, the ongoing war in North Africa and looming threat of an Allied invasion in Western Europe necessitated careful allocation of German forces. In addition to the physical landscape, the geographical location of Sweden also posed a strategic conundrum. An invasion of Sweden would potentially open up another front with the Allied countries, a risk Hitler's war machine was not prepared to take. Furthermore, controlling Sweden would have entailed managing a vast territory with challenging terrain, including dense forests and numerous lakes. The logistical nightmare of occupying and pacifying such a region, coupled with the risk of facing partisan resistance, made Sweden an even less attractive target for Nazi expansion. The dynamics of the international community also contributed to the Nazis' decision. As the war progressed, Germany found itself increasingly isolated diplomatically. Invading Sweden, a neutral nation, would have risked further alienating potential allies and provoked stronger opposition from the Allied powers. Sweden's neutrality was not only a product of its own policies, but also a reflection of broader international dynamics. The Scandinavian nation was part of a group of neutral countries that included Switzerland and Ireland, forming a buffer zone between the warring factions. Invading Sweden would have disrupted this delicate balance and potentially led to a more unified opposition against Nazi Germany. Additionally, the geopolitical landscape of Northern Europe was influenced by the Soviet Union's territorial expansion. The winter war between the Soviet Union and Finland in 1939-1940 had already demonstrated the importance of maintaining a buffer zone for both Germany and the Allies. Sweden's neutrality contributed to the stability of the region, preventing the eruption of additional conflicts that could have further complicated the overall war effort. During the early years of the war, Sweden was under Germany's influence. But as time went on, things changed. By May 1943, Sweden started rebuilding its trade connections with the Allies. 
which had been cut off because of a German blockade at the beginning of the war. Sweden's main contribution to the Allies was their top-notch ball bearings, which were crucial for war machines like tanks, aircraft and machine guns. Sweden transported these ball bearings to Britain through air and sea routes over several years, even though it went against their trade pact with Germany. On top of that, Sweden played a big role in providing intelligence to the Allies. They gave Britain valuable information about German supply chains, troop movements and possible attacks. This knowledge helped Britain strengthen their weaknesses, especially in terms of maritime movement between the two countries. The story of Sweden's involvement in World War II shows a nation focused on survival and independence. With a limited military, Sweden had to rely on negotiation with the resources available. Unfortunately, these negotiations sometimes meant supporting Hitler's war efforts. Even Winston Churchill criticized Sweden for not prioritizing the ethical concerns of the conflict and benefiting from both sides. Sweden consistently supplied steel and machine parts to Nazi Germany. However, we must remember Sweden's challenging geographical position when assessing its role in the war. As a Swedish journalist once said, Sweden was not neutral, Sweden was weak. Well, that's it. We hope you enjoyed our video. Leave your thoughts in the comments, remember to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell for more fascinating history content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.